Welcome to the Assembly of Silence Radio Hour. This audio program has been carefully packed to the legal limit with a weekly allowance of non-governmentally approved deep thoughts per square minute of podcast. And now, here are your hosts, Judah and Noah. Yes. It's a new year. 2019, here we are. As if it really were that different from, what, a few days ago? You're right. How uh, anyone make resolutions? Make some New Year's resolutions? I think. Uh, what did I hear about that recently? <laughs> I think a good resolution is to not make a resolution. Oh, that sounds really good. Although you know, I, I will say I took some time. I took two days. I mean, not a full two days, but it, I, I would say maybe a total of three to five hours over the course of two days. And I reflected on 2018. Holy shit. I know. And I, I had some prompts to go with. There's this thing a, a friend of mine uh, forwarded me. It was called the Year Compass. And they had some really good prompting questions like, um, you know, what were, what were uh, like go through a calendar and find all the major events that happened over the year for you that, that you found worthy and Hmm. write the, you know, the, the the date down and, and what it was. And then it was, then, you know, who were the three biggest influences on you this year and who did you influence? What three people did you influence the most? And and so you went through that whole process? I did. Yeah. There was other questions like, um, you know, what were, um, what were the most memorable moments of 2018 and I mean and it was just all sorts of things like what are you giving what do you want to what do you want to give up what didn't you accomplish like all sorts of really deep probing questions and I went through that and then it visioned into 2019 so like looking Hmm. at like what do you want to accomplish what three things do you want to accomplish what three things do you want to be able to say no to uh in 2019 and and so I took some time and did that and I'm glad I did because I really harvested um, a lot out of 2018 hmm. and I have a lot of vision for this year. So I'm, hmm. I think I didn't write, there were no resolutions, but it was hmm. reflection and visioning. That makes sense. I, I could see that being, it sounds like the kind of thing I would never do myself, but <laughs> I'm curious what would happen if I tried to do it. It would be interesting to give it a whirl. I have no idea what I would put in any of those categories right now. Oh yeah, you got to take some time. I mean, these aren't like you know. I, mean, I don't even know if I could right remember what happened in 2018. Well, I had to bust out a calendar and really like I go through it <laughs> week to week and just sit and and go. And then even when I got done, as a like, like things would pop up, like oh that's right, I did that. Oh yeah, huh. you know, sounds challenging. I'll never get around to it, but I hope you'll send it to me anyway. <laughs> So another thing we got to figure out this year, uh-huh. which uh, we touched on earlier, but we didn't oh. freaking record it. What? Is this a new season? That's right. <laughs> Is it? <laughs> One might be inclined to say that a new year means a new season. There is that. How many did we publish last s- season? <laughs> I have to look at my calendar. <laughs> I think we published Six, seven, six or seven, something like that. Six or seven. Seven's a pretty good number. That's a good number. I would say that that's a, a full season. <laughs> it could be. It could be. Yeah. You know. I mean, it's close to eight weeks. That's almost two months, and a season is really just three months, right? So. Well, I guess if we're going to go by, um, by like the uh, the television model, right? A season is usually what twelve episodes. I have no something idea. Something like that. I, Ten to twelve. I haven't watched TV in like two decades. You haven't watched any of these amazing shows that are currently <laughs> being produced all over Netflix and Amazon and all that crap. What? <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> Stay away from that technology. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's in an upcoming have, episode. Have, <laughs> have you listened to any of the podcasts yet? Yes. Oh, okay. Just want to check. Um, I definitely listened to uh, what you put up uh, the day I was. Oh, let's I not talk going. about that. <laughs> I think we should actually. <laughs> well, what do you want to say about it? Many, Wait, let's just. Do was anyone the disturbed thing. by that? <laughs> They're not telling us anything. <laughs> 
I was slightly disturbed by it. I mentioned, I said in the introduction, it's, I'm disturbed when I hear it too. Well, that's why I'm here now, because you said... Exactly. <laughs> See, it worked, folks. I got him hooked. He'll never miss another episode again. Ever, ever. <laughs> Okay, what the hell? Let's take a detour. So what, what do you want to say about it? <laughs> that was... Uh, that was it? That was fascinating. <laughs> I mean, I... That was a weird moment. What goes through a man's mind to make something like that? I have no idea. I really don't remember. I mean, I should have written down what that year was about. I'm not even sure what year it was that I did that. But uh, clearly I was... <laughs> pondering various <laughs> things. You got... <laughs> You got asked to do some art. See, that's the problem. If someone asks you to do something, I'm usually like, okay, well, yeah, I'll, I'll do that. Uh-huh. But then I have no control over what ends up happening after that. It's right. Just like, I mean, you just launch into something. I just, it just, just came out that way. So, like, as you were recording that, would you listen to what you had already done and speak over it? Is yeah. that what was going on? Yeah. Yeah, I was wondering. So, so. I treated it like a, a kind of like a collage, like a a multi-track collage that I was just kind of massaging. Mm. So, I'd, you know, I'd, I'd get a, an idea, write something, or just say something, and then I'd go, okay, well, that could work here. And if it was this type of a voice, and I'd screw around with it until I had a voice that I liked, you know, uh-huh. and then it just was like that. And then, oh, maybe a little music underneath that or a little sound effect or whatever. It just kind of, I just went until it was like, oh, okay, I think I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, boy, that was fascinating, I got to tell you. You know, I, I mean, I actually, there's a mixture of of uh, fascination and dread and kind of just being upset whenever I listened. I, I, I uh-huh. forgot about it for a long time. Uh-huh. And then I rediscovered it when I moved at some point or another. It was just, I think it was on a CD. And then, uh, and I knew it was like, okay, that was a weird one. And then I I listened to it and I was like, yeah, that was a weird one. <laughs> There's something about it, though, that feels like there's an awful lot of fertile ground there, like a, a, even just as a, f- a way of doing something, you know, to express something, to make a piece. You know, it seems like that's there's a lot in there that could be worked with. I, I wouldn't mind doing it again, but like so many things, you know, it just takes so much damn time to do everything. Someone would have to ask me to do it again. <laughs> And God knows that hasn't happened. <laughs> oh, no, that was that was that was interesting. I was I was really in, intrigued by what you. So maybe you know maybe created. that's a good enough reason that's, for it to be season two now. I think so. That was kind of a capper. That was. But let's just look at the other options because you know there's this feeling of like oh it's a new year and so there's that well. Is this really the new year part that we want to acknowledge as the new year? I mean, people have acknowledged other parts of the year as the new year, and we may be more attuned to think of something like the spring being the new year. But then there's the question, well, is it worth even thinking about the year when it comes to a season? I mean, maybe we'll have a season that's just one episode. It's going to be so amazing. Like, everything is just packed into this one episode, and it's just so over the top that it would be – it would just be crazy to say – yeah, here's episode two, you know? <laughs> so just call that a season, you know? And then we were saying, well, mm. we could just do it when we feel like something has been summed up. Like if we get to the point and there's an episode and everything just kind of comes together and it's all wrapped up in a nice little package, call that a season. That's, right. you know? So maybe yeah. that's the way to do it. I right. think that we don't need to tie ourselves to the calendar here, do no, we? No, because it's a false calendar anyways. So <laughs> Fuck the calendar! <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, you said it perfectly. I okay. think I, I think that's that's it. But I, I but I also agree that that last episode was a showstopper. <laughs> <laughs> it may have been a listener stopper too. We'll see if there's anyone still tuning in. That's another thing too that we need to discuss while we're doing this housekeeping here in front of everyone, in front of everyone, in front of maybe no one. <laughs> but we we need to start doing something to up our numbers here, we dude. Do. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> we, need, we need to market ourselves. We, uh, I mean, we do have a, a relatively dedicated handful of people. We do, actually. We do. I, I have a, a couple people who listen to it, and they mm-hmm. tell me. Yeah, uh, I've gotten that, too. And I see that there's, you know, a number between 10 and 20, basically, solid. 
Nice. You know? Nice. But uh but we do we we have to yeah. get the word out there. Why? Why do we have to get the word out there? I don't really know. <laughs> Basically so I can justify continuing doing this with my wife. If I only if I, I can't tell her that I'm gonna drive all the way out here and we're gonna sit down for three hours and then I'm gonna edit it and put it up there if there's only twenty people listening. <laughs> She would kill you. She would freaking kill me. So I completely neglected. <laughs> Luckily, she's not listening, so I think she won't hear this. But I have completely neglected to mention the actual numbers so far. Although it's still early in the. No, this is so early. Yeah, we're I'm, just we're this just, is just getting, season two. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, not only would she kill you, she would ban us from ever like hanging out. I again. I don't think I'd ever see you again. <laughs> So we got to get these numbers up, man. Uh, uh, if, if for nothing other than just the humor one gets in in listening to us babble along these <laughs> these uh, intrepid conversations that we have, it's worth listening well, to. Well, you know, the thing that's really funny is that it would be perfectly fine with her if there were, I think like 100 plus would be good, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. But substantially, like in terms of what it would mean for us, like... We're not going to get any money out of it, right? Right. right. So it's just going to be like more people listening, and and that would be enough, which is ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> it would be great. I mean, that's great. It would be great. It would be great. Okay, we're going to shoot for 100 now. We're going for 100. We're going for 100. All right, everybody. Anyone who hears this episode and hears our plight, and you want Judah and Noah to stay friends and be able to like <laughs> hang around for season three. <laughs> Tell your friends about this podcast so that Put it up out there. So that we can maintain our friendship and still see each other without uh without me, wife. without me getting a divorce. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it's a good question. Like, how do you build an audience? I mean I, I mean I know there's ways of doing it and what have you, but right. but I'm talking about the assembly of silence here. Yeah, this like, is how no does the assembly audience. of silence this is no regular audience. No. Yeah. So you must know so whoever's listening, you probably know some other weirdos out there who'd like listening to this kind of thing. I would have to imagine. Pass it on. Please. I mean, you've, you've picked it over a few times and looked at it. <laughs> and at least you've been advised to. <laughs> and, you've, and you've taken it home now because I know that, you know, unless it's a bot, right? So maybe this just like uh, fake people downloading our podcast and no. not listening to it. No. You know, there have been these stories out there recently about how I don't remember what the number is, but I'm going to say it's 85% of all the shit that's going on on the web now is basically bot traffic. That doesn't shock me. But I guess they can devote their entire lives to it, whereas, you know, we can only devote six or seven hours a day. (laughs) I I just... (laughs) (laughs) Speaking of bots and information, you know... (laughs) Uh, I, I have uh, recently deactivated my Facebook account. Good for you. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah I feel Fucking really good. A. I know. I celebrated that one. I celebrated that one. There is much to celebrate there. Man, I felt a weight lift off of my shoulders when I did that. Interesting. Yeah, I had deactivated it some time ago. And then for the clinic um, that I work at, Siskiyou Vital Medicine, we they I was helping with mark marketing and things like that and you know it was like well we were doing these facebook live events and hmm. which were great they're great and i had to reactivate my facebook account so that i could you know do mm. these things mm-hmm. and um and i regretted it hmm. deeply cuz it's such a time suck right the scroll addiction and yep. I mean it's just you know there's got to be something in here worth seeing oh, oh look there's a funny meme and another funny meme oh what a waste of time and so we recently hired a marketing firm mm. yes thank God and they're handling all of our social media now so Great. I no longer need to be on Facebook so I deactivated my account and for the second time in my life I felt a tremendous weight lift off of my shoulders mm-hmm. yeah I uh, I left a long time ago and have never wanted to go back I've thought occasionally you know if I ever try to promote something mm-hmm. I might want to do that right right but, that'd be the only reason to 
which is kind of a terrible reason, right? Right. Can you straddle that world? Can you not get sucked <laughs> into it? Given what and, we know about Facebook now, right? Uh, and there are other alternatives. Fuck Facebook. <laughs> Fuck them. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah. I mean, it's just so ridiculous. So much of what I saw is people putting up these memes and these political things right. and and half of which are generated by bots. Exactly. And you have no idea what is really true, what isn't true. Or just troll farms, you know, people yeah, who total. are paid to Absolutely. sit there and promote some kind of horrible idea that they want everyone to get upset about. I heard recently there's something, oh man, what is it called? I.I. Some kind of media company that's supposed to check integrity, (laughs) you know? And it turns out that it's like funded by British, some kind of like government agency within England and Facebook and like, I mean, just like this weirdest collection of interests behind this organization that's like Around integrity. promoting integrity. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. But you know, that was just information that I got from some other bunch of jerks who are trying to promote <laughs> something else. So who the hell knows whether that's accurate either? You know, it, we're 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 sliding into this, which is not quite as bad as the political topic, but. The topic of information and of technology and mm-hmm. the confusion that's happened as a result of all this connectivity. It's, it's, it's like the modern day Tower of Babel. Yes, without a doubt. I mean, that's, that's, I mean there's, it's so clearly another Tower of Babel. It's just confusion of the tongues. Nobody knows what's true. Nobody knows what's real. Nobody knows where the information is coming from. But they're really happy to take it in and feed themselves with it, and pass it along. I remember when I met my first Rastafarian, he was talking about New Babylon all the time. Mm-hmm. I, I had no idea what he was talking about, you know. But I realized that this is exactly where we're living. And it's probably not, it's not just the United States. It's really like sort of global Western civilization, I mean, maybe it's even more than that now. Maybe it's the oh, global I civilization period. I, I I can't say, but... It's the global ruling elites who are profiteers. But it's the whole culture. It's everything yeah. that kind of slogs infe- along it's inf- with it. It's infected, right? So yeah. You, you, it's, it's infected the world. And it's built on hubris because the whole story yes. is about the, the building of this tower that's going to rival the greatness of God. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm... I'm my God, it's so true that that's exactly what our civilization, you know, like bringing a man to the moon and all that kind of stuff, you know. The- if you believe that happened. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, we're back in that again. <laughs> yeah, well. Why haven't we done it twice? Why only once? Done what? <laughs> Put a man on the moon. Oh. <laughs> We've we ran it. out of money. <laughs> we, we, we wanted to make bombs instead. Yeah, that's more profitable. Much more profitable. But I mean, yeah, I guess you have eyes wide shut, right? What yeah. was it? Kubrick uh, is implicated in all that. And in, uh, that was a great documentary about the making of Shining, where he basically hijacked that book. Like, it's really not the book. Uh, and, I, and never, I never saw the movie, nor did I read the book. Well, there's all this imagery of, of the Apollo landing and that sort of uh, – it's not the landing, but it's the the spacecraft and – I don't remember it well enough to be able to talk about it. Are you sure it's The Shining or is it's it in the, the Shining. Oh, it's The Shining? Absolutely, right? yeah. It's not 2001 Space Odyssey? No, but obviously he did that too. And, and they say that a lot of the technology that was used for that film would have been the technology that would have been used for the fake lunar landing if that is what occurred. <laughs> And you know, so and then there's this this way of interpreting uh, The Shining as being some kind of confession on the part of Kubrick for having been involved in that. But then you know he makes Eyes Wide Shut, which is about the the corruption of the elites and the kind of Satan worship that's happening upper parts of society. And apparently, I mean, he died before that thing could be completed. I believe. Isn't that suspicious? Yeah, who knows. <laughs> But again, this is all information that I got. It's, it's like talking about this stuff is kind of like talking about whether or not distant galaxies exist. You know, yeah, like, a topic to be covered in our next episode. Say, like, well, we're getting light from them. I got some messages, <laughs> and something seems to be suggested about what's going on out there. But 
knowing what I know about the signals, right? Okay, like we talked about earlier. Signals from ancient galaxies, billions of years old. Are they still there? Check back with me in a few billion years. Who knows? You know, same same with about all this stuff about, you know, Kubrick and lunar landing and flat earth and <laughs> everything. You know, who the hell knows, man? I'm not going to go out there. And, I mean, you know, even if I went out there as an investigative journalist. Yeah, yeah. Trying to figure out, get down there on the ground, go find Kubrick's conspirators, mm-hmm. co-conspirators. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I mean, someone's probably out there trying to do that, or someone out there is pretending to be the person who's out there doing that. Sure, right? sure. Because well, I mean, that would be a great TV show. And, oh, you know, if you've got connections man. in showbiz, you could probably get that show made. There's like that show, apparently, I think on the History Channel, that's all about uh, finding Hitler. Have you heard about that one? No. <laughs> I heard an interview with the guy who does the show, and it was fascinating. <gasps> You know, it sounds like a really interesting show. They're trying to find Hitler? Like, they believe he's still alive? Well, they think that... <clears> I, <throat> if I understand correctly, and I only heard this interview with him once, and I've been kind of interested to see what the show is about. I have not made it to that yet. Uh, they believe that he went to somewhere in South America. Right. I've heard... And I, hung I, out with all the other Nazis. Like down in Argentina knows somewhere. There. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> who knows? I mean, and the special, but they got a whole show out of it. Yeah, and the special ones got brought back here to start, you know, um, uh, medical uh Well, and studies. the space program. Yes. And sp- <laughs> Which is, hey, thematic. <laughs> <laughs> would would Vernon von Braun have faked the, the you know, because apparently they say, again, who the hell knows if this is true, <laughs> but they say that when... Uh, the lunar landing occurred, Werner von Braun said that this is a victory for Germany. <laughs> I don't know who Werner von Braun was. Uh, he was the guy who developed the V rocket for Hitler. Oh. He was, the, he was a rocket scientist. Oh. And he was uh, one of the main uh, uh, geniuses behind the Nazi technology advantage, you wow. can say. So wow. and he came and worked for NASA. Oh. Yeah. Oh, isn't that, isn't that? According to the story that I heard, <laughs> that I have no way of verifying, that's what happened. I, now, you know what? I mean, there's, doing, picture, doing, there's pictures of this him is, and shit, you know. This is, this is great. Working for NASA, so uh, there's, <laughs> there's pictures. But, you know, it's just a picture. Hey, pictures. <laughs> Pictures don't lie, dude. <laughs> Photo shoots. You I know? mean, even I even mean. Tom Lair made a joke about it back in the fifties. Before, uh, you know, so on one of his records, he makes a, a joke about Werner von Braun. As long as the rockets go up, who cares where they come down? That's not my department, says Werner von Braun. Wow. <laughs> you know, doing this show, doing this episode here, yeah. it just tell, it shows me how easy Alex Jones has it, <laughs> <laughs> dude. <laughs> I don't know what Alex Jones is. I mean, who the hell knows who that guy really is? I don't know if he even knows anymore. But I can't imagine that he's got it easy anymore. Maybe he does. Maybe he's totally in like Flynn. But it just seems like he's just about to explode at any minute. Oh, just. I don't know what that guy is. He's a ticking time bomb is what he is. But just to talk about conspiracies all day long, this is, I mean, like to make your living doing that? You you got it, man. You, I guess that would be kind of cool. Should we just convert to a conspiracy? Theory show we, just, I, I have a feeling we get more subscribers that way who would be willing to pay. <laughs> I, will, I will watch the uh, well, we're gonna have to start a nutritional supplement line. Oh, <laughs> I'll keep an eye on the numbers and see if there's anything that suggests that we get a real bump with it, and we can kind of follow it up from there. <laughs> So, what are we going to talk about in this episode? I think we nailed it, man. We did? I think so. What? How there much time is there? 24 minutes. How did that happen? I, I, I think we have tied that bundle. We didn't talk about anything. We didn't hit it. What are you talking about? Moment. Yeah, we did. We totally are at one right this minute, right now. That one felt like an escape hatch. <laughs> it was on Vernon von Braun's rocket. <laughs> That's right. It's jettisoned. I feel like I'm like in a dinghy in the middle of the ocean now, like, waiting for them to come pick me up. <laughs> he got out of it alive. 
Oh. All right. Well, yeah. Thanks for uh, thanks for another amazing <laughs> ride there. <laughs> Let's see if we got anything left in us for the next one. <laughs> Welcome to 2019. <laughs> thanks for listening. If you like what you heard, throw us a bone by subscribing to this channel, visiting our social media pages, and hitting the various like, love, and clap buttons. We welcome all comments, criticisms, and random thoughts. Our email is silentassembly at protonmail.com. And if you want to be an angel, we have a Patreon page at patreon.com slash silentassembly. We look forward to serving you again soon. In the meantime, remember, turn that thing over a few times before you pick it up and take it home. <laughs>